You have no idea what you have done. Soulless. I know what I did. I stopped you from destroying the world. I was not destroying the world! When you disrupted my ritual, the magical energies pulled me here, into the Fade. Okay, so that's why you're here. But why am I here? Your physical body is unconscious, but you shed a few drops of blood at the ritual site. Enough for a tenuous connection. Blood magic? Firstly, I abhor the use of blood magic. Secondly, had I the power to control you, I would already have used it. So all I have to do to get away from you is wake up. And how much experience do you have willing yourself from sleep to wakefulness? Can't be that hard. While you practice, perhaps you would like to hear about the consequences of your actions. Meaning? The Evanurus. Or as you would call them, the Elven Gods. The creatures that escaped. In ancient times, they ruled the Elves, but that was not enough. They sought not just to be obeyed, but to be worshipped. When I rebelled, they drew on the horrific magic of the Blight. Corrupting all they saw until I trapped them. Thanks to you, though, I am now trapped, and the blighted elven gods walk free. How am I supposed to trust anything you're saying? You saw them escape from my prison. I also saw you bringing down the veil. I had a plan. Varric always said you'd have a big explanation for why none of this was your fault. Varric? Yeah, he said that's your style. Never quite lies, clever half-truths that let you convince yourself you're doing the right thing. He tried to talk to you anyway, and now he's hurt. Varric is... ...quite practiced at shading the truth himself. So those things that got out, you said they were gods? They said they were gods. Blighted, tyrannical, sadistic gods. It took all my power to imprison them millennia ago. But I am certain you will be fine. That's really helpful. What are you, the elven god of sarcasm? Lies, treachery, and rebellion, depending upon the story. And how could I help? I do not have my ritual dagger. I cannot access my network of mirrors to travel from the lighthouse to anywhere in the world. All I can offer is what I know. Helpful advice from the elven god of, and I am quoting you here, lies, treachery, and rebellion, depending on the story. Elganan and Gilanain are your problem to solve. This is your responsibility now. Sleep or relaxing? Maybe if I clear my mind. Back so soon. It must have been worse than I had thought. Hello, Dreadwolf. Ah, but perhaps I am mistaken. You may be here to correct me, to tell me that my concerns were unfounded. I am, after all, remembered as the god of lies, treachery, and rebellion. Depending on the story, and what story shall we tell now? I need to know what the gods are planning. You are asking for knowledge no mortal in this world is privy to. If I am to share it with you, I need to know what makes you the right person to lead the fight against Algernon and Gelanain. Someone has to do something. I may not be the right person for this job, 
but I'm the only one left. So your call to action is that any attempt is better than none? Back in the Grey Wardens, I was with a group of recruits outside this village, dealing with the Darkspawn incursion. Our orders were to wait for reinforcements, but we knew that by the time they arrived, everyone in that village would be dead. So you led your team of recruits in any way, collapsing the tunnel and saving the village. How'd you know that? You helped Varric pursue me for the better part of a year. It would have been foolish not to learn about who was hunting me. Then you know that if someone has to make a call, I'll do it. I suppose I was not so different when I started. Started what? My rebellion against the Evanuris. The Elven Gods, as you call them. They wish to reclaim their dominion over this world. To accomplish that, they will need two things. First, the Blight. What exists in this world is a bare fragment of its power. The rest is imprisoned. Until they release it. The rest of the Blight is imprisoned? There's more than what's in the world already? Yes. Centuries ago, the Magisters of Devinter opened my prison. A tiny fragment of the Blight escaped. That fragment grew beneath the earth and led to the Blights that have swept across the world. However terrible the Blight is now, it is a mere fraction of what we will see if its full power is unleashed. The Blight didn't escape with the gods? Elganan and Gelanane escaped largely empty-handed, fortunately. Most of the Blight is still trapped in the prison I created ages ago. So what we saw at that village, that's them not at full strength? Correct. I don't understand. Elganan and Gelanane were elves like you, right? Why would they want to blight the world? It is my fault. As the Dread Wolf, I was a thorn in their side. When my efforts weakened their grasp on the Elven people, they grew frustrated, then desperate, and turned to the Blight. Once the corruption took hold of them, they were blind to its horror. It was just another source of power for them. Now they would blight the world without hesitation, and call us backward and foolish for opposing them. What would they need to do to free the Blight? And how do we stop them from doing it? They will need to pierce the veil to reach the Blight's prison. My Lyrium Dagger is one of the few artifacts capable of doing so. We've already recovered it from the ritual site. Excellent. Then they will have to make their own. That will give you time. You said the gods needed two things, and the Blight is the first. What's the second? Followers. They have called themselves gods. And what is a god without worshippers to sing their praises? I'm not going to bend a knee to blighted, murdering monsters just because their ears are pointed like mine. I don't think many other elves are going to either. Agreed. Elganan and Gilanane care little for the elves. They will find worshippers among those hungry for power. Tyrants and bullies. The cruel and the corrupt who fear their own vulnerability and seize any chance to feel strong. If you hunt them, they will lead you to Algernon and Gilanane. Thank you. I'll go poke at the cruel and the corrupt, and we'll see what we find. The Veravas, the Lighthouse Saluvian, can take you anywhere, if you master its secrets. Have you done so? Not yet, but we've got one of the Veil Jumpers working on it. She'll get it sorted. And we'll see how it goes. Yes. I suppose we will. And when you speak with Varric, please tell him that I... regret what happened. When last we spoke, you intended to assault the cruel and the corrupt in hopes of finding servants of Elganan and Gelane. Has your search been successful? You could say that. It looks like both the Venatori and the Antam are working for Algernon and Gilanane. Unsurprising. The Venatori want magical secrets, and the Antam want to destroy anyone opposing their brutal expansion. Both will readily bow to anyone who promises them power. And they're using that power to hurt a lot of people. The Antam and the Venatori both have dragons doing their bidding. Dragons? That is worse than I had feared. Yeah. We drove off the one the Antan brought to Treviso. 
barely. Have you determined how the dragons are being directed? If it is blood magic, it may be possible to disrupt their control. The dragons were blighted. We think that's what let the gods control them. The blight? Of course. The blight seems to be the gods' favorite tool right now. We ran into Venatori who could control Darkspawn. Elganan would not bestow such power unless the Darkspawn were to serve as the main force of his army. And I suspect Gilanane will see the Darkspawn as new subjects for her... modifications. We've already run into a few Darkspawn nobody has seen before. That's in addition to the Blighted Dragons. That is the fate Elganan and Gilanane planned for this world, then. Corruption and Blighted Slavery. Stop acting like you're so much better than they are. Your bullshit ritual would have destroyed the world just as badly. Do you truly believe my goal was to destroy this world? I believe your goal, like you said, was to transfer the gods to a better prison. The one you're stuck in now. And you were willing to tear down the veil and destroy this world while you did so. The veil is a wound I cut into the Fade in a moment of desperation. While making their prison, it should not exist. I had a host of spirits ready to help when the Veil fell. They would have minimized the loss of life. We thought you were just bringing the Veil down to destroy everything. If we'd known... Thousands would still have perished. Varric would never have agreed to such a plan. Why would you agree to it? The world is broken because of my past choices. It falls to me to heal it. Even if that healing comes with a cost. Spoken like a god. I am not a god. I am as I have always been. A man. All too aware of his failings. But equally aware that if he did not act, accepting the judgment it would bring, all would be lost. They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you when this is over? I've got enough problems right now as it is. That's one for future Rook to deal with. Pragmatism. You will focus on the present, knowing that someday you will face the consequences of your choices. I believe I can work with that. If the gods are using dragons, you will wish to find someone trained to fight them. Have you unlocked the Lighthouse Alluvian? Yes. We found the crossroads. It's still confusing, though. I cannot help you from in here. You may need to find an expert in the magic of the Fade. And if the Darkspawn are to be Elganan's army, you will need Grey Wardens to fight them. I've got a few of them, and I'm a Warden myself. Maybe that's enough? Doubtful. You'll want an army. And I believe you will find a way to obtain one. You seem to have a knack for gaining the cooperation of your adversaries. How fares your battle? The gods are moving against Weishaupt and the Grey Wardens. We've heard rumors the Darkspawn are being led by an Archdemon. And you have questions? I need to know how Archdemons relate to the gods. Are they just like the Blighted Dragons, or are they something else? I also need to know how to deal with the gods if they show up at Weishaupt. I propose a bargain. I will answer your question, if you answer mine. What? How are the Grey Wardens? Do they understand the truth of the danger yet? We've been through this already. You agreed to help me. What did you think my help would look like, Rook? I need to know that you are prepared. I've gotten a few of them to come around. You're a Grey Warden yourself. Surely you have friends within the Order you might call upon. I do. And I have. We've recruited another Warden named Davrin. But the Grey Wardens as a whole still do not trust you yet, as I feared. We're making progress. When I asked why you should be trusted to lead the fight, you said that nobody else was doing it. 
That sufficed for me. But you will need more to convince the Grey Wardens. They see themselves as destined to lead this battle. You cannot defeat Elganan and Gilanane without the Wardens. What will you do to bring them to your side? All I can really do is keep trying to get through to them. Have you ever ridden home in a wagon and felt the streets go from paved to dirt beneath the wheels? The horse is slow, and everything grows quiet as you're near home. What do you call that feeling? I don't really have a word for it. No, you do not. Elganon destroyed that emotion. He burned it from the mind of every living being. There were spirits of that feeling. Just as there are spirits of joy, or fear, or despair. I begged them to fight. What happened to them? They waited too long. Without the emotion in this world to focus on, they faded until nothing remained. When you grow quiet, it is a part of your soul reaching for a feeling and finding emptiness. Because I fail. I understand. I'm not going to fail. How? What will you do? I can't force the first warden to listen. I have to let the wardens try it their way. And how many wardens will die before the first warden realizes his mistake? I've done everything I can to reason with him. I once warned an elven village that Gilanane was coming and they were in danger. They would not listen. I had to watch as their bodies twisted, as their shrieks turned into the grunting of animals. Their eyes were the worst part. They were still aware. They knew what had been done to them. I gained little peace from knowing that I had tried to warn them. Is that what you hoped for? No. I have to find a way to get through to them. Then what will you do? I don't have to convince all of them. I just have to convince the First Warden. Or remove him. Enjoyable as that is to imagine, I doubt the rest of the Wardens would approve. Did you know the Evanurus once numbered many more than those whose names survived in the Elven Pantheon? One Warlord was particularly cruel. I sought to free his slaves, but so fearsome was his reputation that none would join me. What did you do? I made people laugh at him. How did that help? For twelve years. Every sound near him, from whispered pleas to shouted oaths to crackling fire, all became mocking laughter. His mind broke under the ridicule, and when he fell, his slaves rose up and joined me. I doubt laughter is going to work on the First Warden. If not that, then what? Whatever it takes. Easily said. But it will have to be enough for now. You have answered my question, and I owe you an answer in return. Yes. The old gods of Tevinter, the Archdemons. There never were Tevinter gods. The Archdemons, as you call them, were always merely the weapons of the Evanuris. All right. Let's hope we can find the gods before they find their weapons. Unfortunately, the Dragon Thrall's life force is bound to the Evanuris as both power and protection. You will not be able to kill or likely even harm one of the Evanuris until their Dragon Thrall is slain. The old stories of the Tevinter gods have them whispering in the dreams of ancient Magisters. How did they do that if they were just tools of the Elven gods? The Archdemons were once High Dragons. The Evanuris bound them as a source of power. When I imprisoned the gods, their dragons remained free. That was my mistake. How so? I never bound a dragon to myself, for I believed that to enslave another creature was immoral. As such, I did not understand the power that connection gave. I thought the prison I had made was perfect. But their dragons were the conduit through which they spoke to dreaming minds.
What can you tell me about the Archdemons themselves? Each is different, shaped by the whims and ego of its master. Elganan is the Lord of Tyranny. He would have ruled alone had Nathor not forced him to share power. Those who are strong, he molds into dictators themselves, with visions of godhood. Those who are weak, he crushes. His archdemon reflects him. It is huge to feed his ego, the epitome of dragonkind, bent to his will. Elganon sounds legitimately terrible. He is cruelty and arrogance personified. All of the Evanuris were flawed, but he made all of them worse. By contrast, Gilanane was a servant of Andrew, whose skill at making monsters earned her promotion to the Evanuris. She is brilliant, ambitious, and unconstrained by anything you would understand as morality. In a kinder world, you would never need to see what she has done to her archdemon. In this world, I only hope you kill it quickly. In any event, the Evanuris will not be vulnerable until their archdemons are dead. Any other surprises we should know about? Even with their dragons dead, the Evanuris are powerful and well protected. You will need to use my dagger, the one you recovered. It can pierce their enchantments and strike them down. All right. Kill the Archdemons, then use the dagger to take down the gods. Even a single opportunity to strike the Evanuris down will be rare, fleeting, and costly. You will not have another chance to catch them unawares. When you strike, you must be fully prepared. The fall of Weishaupt reverberated across the Fade, as did the fall of an Archdemon. But unless I am mistaken, both Elganan and Gilanane yet stand. We took down Gilanane's Archdemon, but we weren't able to kill her. And how are you doing? Right now, I'm more concerned with how the team is doing. I expect their morale is shaken after what happened. They've spent a lot of time yelling at each other. Or me. Not the worst outcome. All things considered. Properly focused, that anger can forge your team into a weapon keen enough to cut through any obstacle. You cannot stand against Elganan and Gilanane with logic. Those motivated by greed or self-interest will change alliances. But those who serve you with passion and loyalty will follow wherever you lead even to their deaths, if necessary. I won't order anyone to their death. If you gain their loyalty, you will not need to order them. They will volunteer. Solus? No. A cause like yours is larger than any one person. It is even larger than your own wishes. Your team will not thank you for sparing them if the world falls to the Blight. But perhaps it will not come to that. For now, you have a team to rebuild. I'll keep that in mind. Do you have any suggestions on our next move against the gods? If you oppose Elganan and Gilanane's minions, you will get your opportunity. You think one of the Antarm or Venatori commanders will help us find the gods? Possibly. But more importantly, you will aggravate them. You rendered Gilanane mortal at Weishaupt. It is an embarrassment, an insult. Neither she nor Elganan can ignore. If you continue to disrupt their plans, you will not need to track them down. They will come to you. I'll be ready. One final warning. You have survived a confrontation with Gilanane, which few still live to claim. But her power pales in comparison to Algernon's. If he takes the field himself, remember, in a fight such as ours, escaping to fight another day is a victory.
That dragon raised Minrathus. Where were you? No one's retreating. We'll all die. First team of attacking the force. You and your friends stood against the gods. Your courage is laudable. Solus! But mortals cannot win this battle. I am sorry. It is what must be. I did everything for you, Rook. You're worthless. Varric never believed in your knowledge. You were never up to it. You failed us all. What failure cuts your conscience now, I wonder? Ballara. Your friend is dead. Dead and gone. It was your fault. Your fault. Regret, like all emotions, is a powerful thing. It can bruise us, break us, or blind us to the truth. Regret is even strong enough to serve as the lock on a prison built to hold God. Such a prison can hold any God. Even you. No. You were never ready to make the sacrifices that leadership requires. But through our connection, I molded you into someone the prison would accept in my place. is done. This is where we talked when I was dreaming. And I'm not dreaming. 